Brothers and sisters in Christ, good evening to you on this Monday, Thursday. We'll be looking at servant leadership and feet washing. In John chapter 13, um, the whole of John chapter 13, but I'm going to read verses 3 to 5 right now. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. Let us pray. Open our eyes, Lord. We want to see Jesus. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our hearts, Lord, and help us to trust you. Open my mouth, Lord, and help me to speak your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, chatter the table dwindled. People began to become uncomfortable. And the silence uh, grew. The problem was the meal was ready, the Passover meal, but there was no servant to wipe their feet. Now, we must understand that this table was not uh, a modern table. It was a mat on the ground. So feet wearing sandals in the dust would need washing if you're gonna sit around to eat. And so was the custom, someone who would be a servant in a Lord's house would come and do the feet washing. But since in this case, everyone was both guest and co-host, with Jesus, of course, there was no servant. So, who was going to get up and wash the feet? So the silence became more discomforting. Now, one of them would have to do it. The trouble was this. How could they do it without embarrassing themselves? How could they do it without debasing themselves? So, especially in an atmosphere when everyone was jockeying for position, the kingdom was near, see? And uh, if you're jockeying for position, you don't want to be beneath someone else. So as the silence increased and no one would get up, Jesus is looking from left to right to see if somebody will do it. But the question they were asking themselves, which is the question that we still ask today, it's very important questions I want you to consider it, maybe even pause this tape and think about it. Here's the question, I'll read it. How do we esteem others as better than ourselves without losing our self-esteem, our pride, our positions and our status. How do we celebrate others, promote others, lift others up into the spotlight when we need the spotlight ourselves? Nothing is wrong with the spotlight. The spotlight is an evil, but it seemed that only one person could be in the spotlight, so could we truly celebrate others and still be great? 
could we still promote others without envy and jealousy? By now, no one was moving. The silence became unbearable. So Jesus got up dressed like a servant, took the towel, took a basin of water and began to wash the disciples' feet like a servant would. Now the question is, what attitude of mind that Jesus had, what is that attitude of mind that would allow him in the face of debasing himself, in the face of the fact that he is the Lord, the Lord of glory, what attitude of mind did it call for, for him to get up and do the job of a slave or servant? And I'm putting, putting it to you that there were four things that Jesus was thinking, four attitudes in his worldview that caused him to be able to do this. And John, the apostle, did um, note what those four things are. Three of them are in verse 3. So let's look at verse 3. Jesus understood his personal privileges. Verse 3 says, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands. Sorry. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, took up the towel of service and shamelessly served. Jesus knew that he was God's son. Jesus knew that he was owner of all. He had no point to prove. He had nothing to reach for, to grab for. He didn't have to jockey for position. He was at the top. Earthly rank was meaningless. And in that context, he was able to serve because nobody could take away who he really was. He was the son of God who served. He was not just a servant. So when we understand our identity in Christ, when we understand that though we were unworthy, Christ made us worthy, so we serve not from a position that is beneath, but we serve from a position that's above. We come at this service with a different perspective, not as servants, but as sons and daughters of God. And so when we do that, we will serve with a different mindset. We will be serving from a high place. Secondly, Jesus understood not just his person and his privileges, but he understood his place in the pecking order. Verse 3b says, Jesus, knowing that he had come from God, confidently took up the towel of service, knowing that he had come from God. So, what does that say to us? Only a high person could be humble because they have to choose to leave their high position to come down. A person who is low can't be humble. They're already in a humble position. So to be humble, you have to first acknowledge that you're somebody important and then choose to serve from that place. Humility also understands the pecking order, you know who you answer to and you know who answers to you. And everybody has a boss. Jesus knew that he came from God, that he answered to God. He knew that he was on God's mission and in God's service and that he was God's agent. So this was not about him. This was about the mission and obeying the will of the Father. So when we understand this, and we think of ourselves as God's agent, we will take the focus off of ourselves and focus on the mission at hand. And then we'll be able to esteem others better than ourselves and to serve them. Thirdly, 
Jesus understood his purpose and his perspective. It said, Jesus, knowing that he was going to God, so that's why he was able to fearlessly take up the towel. He was going to God. He came from God and he was going back to God. Okay, so he knew that this service was only temporary. It's only for a time. So he was not going to make a bigger thing of this, of serving than it really was. Because we are locked into time. You know, you know we're creatures of the temporal and it's somehow we lose perspective and we think that all that's important is the titles we've achieved and the ranks that we've that we've gained and, and so on and so when we make too big a, a thing of it when we when we think too much of it we, we we tend to protect it and guard it jealously but jesus knew that this was just for a time and he's going back to his father because that's where he came from that's what this is all about He's answering to his father. He's an agent of his father. He's going back to his father. So this all ends with God. In that way, he's also going to be fearless when it comes to challenges to his ministry. Because when you challenge his ministry and he understands his call, he knows that he's not answering to anybody else but God. He answers to God. He doesn't answer to man. And so this is temporary. You want to take my life? Okay, go ahead. But this is not the end. This is not the end. Everyone will have to answer to God. And when we take that perspective, we're able to fully um, serve and do the will of God in lifting others up, even if it's above ourselves. Because don't make a too big thing. Don't take yourself too seriously. Okay. And finally, uh, I should say, Finally, yes, uh, Jesus understood the power, his power, he understood that he had the power of love. His power didn't come from authority and lording it over others. His power came from love. He said early in verse 1, Jesus knew that his hour had come, but not only that, he knew that he loved his own unto the end. He loved them and he loved them unto the very end. That was his motivation. The prime motivation for service has to be love if it's going to be this kingdom of God business that we're doing. The prime motivation has to be love for others, love for God. Uh, Jesus was not motivated by anything else but love, not pride, not status, and not earthly power. And sometimes we can uh, <laughs> we can use service. Get this, get this. We can use service as a sense of false pride and false humility. You know, not love. So the world is thinking that oh, here is this big president or uh, prime minister coming down to do this menial task and here's this pastor this priest or whatever and oh what a humble man we got to be careful god sees you see because you can also do those things with the view to get to call attention to yourself so jesus's prime motivation was love um somebody says um this writer he says there's a big difference between serving the, the needs of others and being a servant of others. There's a big difference between serving the needs, serving others' needs, and being a servant of others. The difference is this. Serving the needs of others, I'm praising. Serving the needs of others has God and calling at its focus. Serving the needs of others has God and calling at its focus. It's in the context of God and the context of your call. Being a servant to others' needs is based 
on doing whatever it takes to serve these people's needs outside, even if it means it is outside the will of God and outside the thing that you, the calling that you've been called to, uh, to have been called to. And so we are not servants of others. We are servants of God. And so we are serving the needs of others. We are not being servants of God. There's a difference between service and servitude. And love is the chief motivator. If you serve or if we serve out of um, any other motive, it could turn to pride and show off and false humility. And what does that lead to? It leads to heartache, to burnout, and to bitterness because we're going to cry about how much we been helping people and how now they bite the hand that feed us and all of that stuff so when service comes from a place of love there is no complaint because we answer to God and to God only we come from so Jesus knowing that he have all things that he's come from God and that he's going back to God he has a completely different perspective on how he's going to lead a life of service. I trust that these thoughts inspire you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We pray that it stirs our hearts, that it motivates us to move and to think and to act like kingdom people. In the name of Jesus, amen.